All right, guys, uh, this is DJ Wolf Live here. I don't plan on being on too long, so I'm going to try and make it as, uh, you know, as simple and quick as possible. Hold on a second. I'm doing this actually on my tablet. I usually do it on, you know, my main equipment. I decided to do it on my tablet instead because I didn't feel like doing the equipment part. Uh, what I'll do, I'll spend a little bit more time on it later on, probably sometime tomorrow if I get time tomorrow or sometime during the week because I got we got a lot to talk about, guys. Whew. So much to talk about. I, you know, it's been a crazy year. This year started out so, so, so busy. I mean, it's been very busy. This is probably one of the busiest years I've had in the last uh as far as starting out the year, this has just been, been a lot of stuff on my mind, a lot of crazy stuff happening. And, and guys, I don't even know where to begin. I truly don't know where to begin. I really don't. But, uh, Let's get into it. This is DJ Wolf Live. We're going to be talking about that uh, racist governor out here in Virginia, Governor Northam. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Jesse Smollett, what the what the deal is with him. And we're going to talk about Kamala Harris. No comment on it right now. <laughs> this is DJ Wolf Live, the live edition. Um, all, by the way, you actually can uh, chat with me as well. Let's see. I haven't invited anybody, but I'll post it out here. Anyway, um, on, oh, I'm in. Oh, live. Now. I always let people know that. So you said, well, I didn't know you was on. All right, so the chat box is open here. If you're a Spreaker fan, you can actually catch me on there. I don't have it on YouTube right now, but if you get the on-demand episode directly on YouTube and Spreaker.com. Uh, if you want to hear more, uh, you guys are always, always welcome. Uh, let's see, this is the thing. reason why I don't use this because this thing always freezes up on me. Um, let's see. Oh, it did freeze up on me. This is why I don't like doing it on my tablet. All right. Um, oh, there we go. Nevertheless, uh, as this thing freezes up, and I'm trying to get back to my square here. It looks like everything's working. I'm on live. I'm trying to switch from the chat mode back to the effects mode. I'll just type something in here just to... <laughs> oh well yeah boy but I was trying to play my music but I guess I can't do that alright guys uh, can't get to my music anyway can't get to my sound effects and that's fine but anyway uh, I wanted to talk about a couple things that's on my mind right now one of the things I'll start off with is uh, Governor Northam. According to a published report in uh, the local news outlet here, it says uh, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam won't resign, said he wasn't a racist in photo. Now, you see, this uh, guy happens to be a Democrat. And you know, I noticed one thing I noticed when I was watching the news last night and today. Governor Northam, the media, now I'm telling you, that's how protective the media is the main, the lamestream media is what I call it. They know he's a Democrat, and they know this is a Democrat that's doing this shit. He's not a Republican. He's an absolute one hundred percent Democrat. He ran on a Democrat ticket. He didn't run as a Republican. Okay, okay. Now they're saying that he's a Democrat. Of course. Yeah, we knew that. Because they know it's going to be a backlash against the Democratic Party because of stuff like this and Kamala Harris. 
See, the thing of it, it this is, I'm, I'm going to read what it says. It says, uh, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam says he won't resign and wasn't shown uh, in a yearbook photo showing uh, a blackface costume and a KK robe, KKK robe that prompted Democrats and Republicans alike to call for him to step down, according to a high-ranking Democratic official. Okay, so they actually didn't say he was a Republican. I know, I know for a fact he's a Democrat. Uh, Northam initially planned to resign after apologizing for appearing in the photo and speaking with the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus, but later had a change of heart. The Virginia Democrat told uh, the local news station out here, uh, he now insists neither figure wearing a racist con- costume was him. So see, now he's now he's backpedaling. See, that's the typical politician. This is why I don't, I'm not a fan of politicians because politicians will flip-flop on you all day when they want to change the story about something and wants to create a narrative where they can control the narrative instead of the narrative being what it is and you, what you can see what it actually is instead of what they're telling you it is. You know, they always try to dictate what you're seeing or what you're hearing or what they're saying. You know, to their advantage. Um, now, this is what it says. They said he's supposed to be planning uh, to make an official statement today at 2.30. Uh, so in about uh, another hour, he will be making uh, a statement. Uh, amid, amid immense pressure to step down. Now, initially, yesterday, he said he apologized for appearing in the photo, which was printed in a medical school yearbook on a page titled with his name. So initially you had him admitting that he did it, that he was in the photo. He didn't tell you whether he was the blackface person or the KKK guy, but he initially admitted that that was him. You know, this is the number one problem I have with uh, these uh, politicians. They can't be honest with you on anything. Most of them are. Almost none of them are. None that I know of. You know, and this is what he says. I am deep, and this is what he said yesterday. I am deeply sorry for the decision I made to appear as I did in the photo and for the hurt that decision caused then and now, the Democratic governor said in the statement. That's what he said. But notice he said later on he completely denied it. So he's flip flopping. First, he, you know, he knew at some point once he admitted it that he, that that was him, that he's going to flip flop and say, oh no, now it's not me. You know, he's full of it. He's full of it. You know? <laughs> and mind you, this guy was a doctor. Last Friday, he posted an apology video on, uh, uh, later Friday, I'm sorry, he posted an apology video on Twitter saying, quote, that photo and the racist and offensive attitudes it represents does not reflect the person that I am today or the way that I have conducted myself as a soldier, a doctor, and a public servant. Now, he hasn't said anything about uh, uh, why he reneged, which he did, or admitted that he appeared in the video. The Democratic Party in Virginia continued to call for uh, Northam to leave office, and so do I. They said uh, they, that they made a decision to let uh, Governor Northam know uh, to do the correct thing and resign this morning. We have gotten word that he will not do so this morning. You know, that's that white privilege. You know? Because he feels he still got it. Uh, and then it says something about they reiterated a call for the new governor to step down and allow uh, the new lieutenant governor, uh, Justin Fairfax, to lead the state. You know? And he has, like I said, again, there's been a report published, other published reports says that he has no media plans to resign. You know. So now he's backpelling. And of course, uh, this just going over stuff that happened with what he did. And the picture was taken in 1984. Not that it matter, but it doesn't matter if he took it in 1984 or 74 or 2004. He's guilty. You know. And now, of course, all these uh, Democrats are talking about, matter of fact, all the Democrats are talking about uh, Cory Booker, uh, Tim McCullough, Joe Biden, and Kamala Harris has all reported statements on, uh, regarding this. Uh, speaking of the devil, 
uh, Kamala Harris said, uh, and her, uh, this is from her Twitter, and I'm reading it verbatim. Uh, leaders are called to a higher standard, and the stain of racism should have no place in the halls of government. The governor of Virginia should step aside so that the public can heal and move forward together. All right. Cory Booker said these images are aroused centuries of anger, anguish, and racist violence, and they eroded all confidence in Governor Norm's, Northam's ability to lead, which I, I have to agree. We should expect more from our elected officials. He should resign. Okay. And the Virginia GOP says what Ralph Northam did as an unforgivable is unforgivable. Given his statements on the right to life coupled with the most recent relevations, he has lost the moral authority to continue to govern and should resign immediately. Terry McCullough said this has been a heartbreaking day. Ralph Northam is my friend and he served well in, as my lieutenant governor and as governor. His actions on display in this photo were racist, unacceptable, and inexcusable at any age at any time. I totally agree. Joe Biden says there is no place for racism in America. Governor Northam has lost all moral authority and should resign immediately. Justin Fairfax is the leader of Virginia needs now. I'm going to tell you what we need. Now, this is my take on it, and I'm going to end it here All right, on this topic. Northam needs to resign immediately. Okay? He had lived with this lie that he was about the people. He's not. Now, here's my thing. He definitely owes our people, African American people, a big apology on that. And he needs to step down. All right. If you continue to be governor in Virginia, okay, where I have many families that live out there, I just want to say that, but. Yeah, nevertheless, uh, I'm sure they, they're not tolerating it right now. And I'm definitely not tolerating. If you continue to live with this mark that you created because your racist ties to racism in your roots and to continue to be governor, you need to be put out of, of the governorship of the state of Virginia. No one should accept that. No one. We as African Americans should not accept that. No one should accept that beyond us as well. Because it shows that to accept that means it's okay for people to go around and mark or mock us as a people. And I'm fed up with that kind of shit. He needs to go. He needs to go. In every sense of the word. You effed up. Get your ass out of there. Get your ass out of there. Period. It is unacceptable. And un- unbecoming. Unbecoming. Becoming of a uh, leader. As far as I'm concerned. There's no excuse about this man. There really is no excuse. I'm sorry. I'm not going for the phone for that okie doke shit. You know, I'm not. Jeez, it's, it's, it's getting ridiculous out here, man. Try to type up Kamala Harris here. Stand back, guys. Yes. Um. I was going to talk about Cory Booker. I don't know a whole lot. I'm going to do a separate uh, podcast on him. All right. I really am. Because like I said, I don't know a lot about Cory Booker. I know he's a uh, J- Jersey uh, state senator. And that's pretty much all I know about him. I mean, and I don't mean anything uh, behind, you know, who he is as a senator and what he does. I just can't comment on something I'm not familiar with right now. So you guys have to forgive me on that. Um. What I will do is uh, comment on a couple of other things with a couple of other subjects. 
I talked about Kamala Harris. All right. Um, and the reason why I did talk about her in the first place. And we could talk about race all day. OK, she's not uh, of African descent. She's Jamaican. But if you think about it, Jamaica's are of African descent. Let's be real about that. We can argue potato, potato about that all day long. OK, her mother's in it. All right. Now, I've been told in my family, my grandmother had told me a couple years before she passed away. Uh, that we were of Jamaican descent. My mother never told me that. My mother never even brought it up. You know, my dad's always told me that, you know, that we had Haitian blood on his side of the family. My mother's never told me that we ever had Jamaican side of the family. Never talked about it. Not once. Not never. And to me, that's a damn shame that you only knew one part of your heritage, but the other parent has never discussed it. She has never discussed it. My grandma told me that her father, which is my great grandfather, was Jamaican. And she had been over to Jamaica. My mother's never talked about it once. Never brought it up. And to me, that's a damn that's a damn shame. And to me, I think that's also uh a detriment to not only the na uh, our our her my heritage on my mother's side, she didn't even acknowledge it, and that's fucked up. Didn't even acknowledge my heritage on her side. I, I just don't get it. You know, I never confront her about it because you know what. I go to the source because the source I should be able to go directly to wouldn't do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that on another subject. I will be talking about that because that that uh, that pissed me off. But that, that's another story. I you know. Anyway, and anyhow, and anyway, um, I uh, I uh, want to make that point across because. You got a lot of black people out here that talking about, well, she's not black enough to uh, represent us. And I'm tired of this shit. Y'all some of the same people who caped for Hillary Clinton for decades and Bill Clinton. Y'all were talking about he was an honorary black man because his father wasn't in, in his life. And he was raised by a single mother. Okay? Then y'all caped for Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton all the while was Upper crust and one thing about y'all niggas. She proven it over the years. All right, that's another whole story. Although I I, I will admit there's policies and, and that's the real that's the thing I'm about to come up with to you guys or about I'm about to bring my point across. Kamala Harris honestly is more about uh policy. Now she does brag about her heritage. I'm not that concerned about her heritage, and the heritage to me doesn't matter. You know, now her policy is, is the issues that I have problems with. Her policy is a, a, a district attorney. Uh, I think she was attorney general at one point and prosecutor. Those policies I have problems with. All right. I'm not going to go into detail, but I've already talked about some of it already. Um, But we know for a fact that and this is the issue I have with her. There is African heritage in your, in your lineage. There's white heritage in your lineage too, from my understanding. They never, people haven't talked about that, but that's been pretty well known. It's already been documented, but that's another story. Uh, it's supposed to be doc, uh, documented that there was, uh, she has uh, her family, uh, I don't remember if it was her mother's side or father's side, or, or were slave, slave owners. All right. And they come from a, up, up across our background. I know she does. But I ain't going to get all that. My issues are policies for the people. She's not for the people. She's about helping to put the policies on people. That's facts. 
Her heritage to me is second to that and second only to that. You know, we the first ones that want to judge people based on their heritage on what they could do for you. But you don't want to be judged based on your heritage. So why don't we stop that bullshit? You know, but I also say this. Y'all people think that Kamala Harris is the second coming of Obama. That ain't necessarily a good thing either. And like I stated in many of uh, not only my podcast, but on uh, comments I made on other YouTube channels after watching their YouTube videos. And I'll say it again. Kamala Harris is the Trojan horse uh, of this generation coming up. She's the biggest Trojan horse since former President Obama. There's no doubt about it. Okay. And the media wants to portray her as uh, the second coming of Obama. Like, oh, yeah. She's going to be better than Obama because she's for women's rights. She's for immigration. She's for Jewish people rights, for what I heard her say herself. She hasn't talked about rights for African murder. Not one time did she bring it up. That speech that she did in, in uh, Oakland, never talked about it. And you have black people there. You have a lot of white people there, too. But she's out for, I'm telling you, she's out for one thing only, just like Ralph Northam herself. And others, they're about building their careers on power that will get them to where they need want to be. That's why Ralph Northam won't, won't he will not resign. He don't want to resign, and, you know, even though he got a black mark that people knows about what he did in his past. He's not going to resign at this point. He don't want to resign. You know why he don't want to resign? Because this is a good thing for him to to be able to be in the position he's in, a power. All right. That's number one. But the cat's out the bag. Now we realize that racism comes in all forms and all political uh, backgrounds. And even in the case of Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, to me, is kind of biased in some ways. That's why she won't speak on black issues, because she's not about the black agenda. No, way. she's really not. So y'all voters out here, particularly us, Better start learning to get behind people that's about us, that's about our communities, that's about our our businesses and everything else coming up directly from where we grew up. But we don't get behind those kind of people. We get, get behind light-skinned people like Cory Booker or uh, uh, Barack Obama and Kamala Harris. Those are the people you, we, we get behind all the damn time. That's the other problem I got. OK. And for what I know, two of the three, I don't know about Cory uh, Booker's upbringing, but I know about the other two. OK. And let's keep it real. Two of the three that I know about. Ain't from where we came from. Y'all know that. OK. They're not. And I and I know is I haven't seen that. I have not seen that at all. But those candidates are people that we need to put out there should be people who we know that came up from the other side of the tracks that you can build upon that knows what we need, that we know comes from good stock. That's our problem. We ride with whoever said should be your candidate for you, and we don't choose them for ourselves. I got a big issue with that. And we ain't doing it. We let somebody make the decision for us. That's why we have all these issues, guys. Come on. This is the problem. And y'all don't recognize it. You just keep falling for the fucking okie duck. Excuse my French. That's the motherfucking problem. We fall for the okie doke way too damn much. And I'm sick of it. I'm going to make a suggestion about this. Why don't we create a third party and build candidates that we need to put out there from the ground up? People we know 
that come from good stock within our communities that we could build upon that knows what's needed, who understands what what's needed from our within our communities and who recognize what's needed in our communities based on how they were raised in our communities. That's the point I'm trying to make. But we wait on somebody to bless you with a magical person to do it for you. Okay. And I'm talking about uh, a lot of times you got people and and don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking the black church. Okay, I go to church almost every weekend. Well, most weekends. I mean, I go every Sunday. But, you know, I, I, I do try to attend, attend when I need to go and whenever I'm up to going. Maybe put it like, like that. The thing of it is, you got black people who, they go by hope. They don't go by, this is what we need to do to put the work in. They just go by hope. Hope is not enough anymore, people. It's just not. Newsflash. Hope is not enough anymore. You got to do more than just fucking hope. You got to work for it. Okay? They said faith without work is completely dead. And until we start putting those candidates out there that we need to represent us, that we know is from us, from our stock, from our neighborhoods, from our vicinities, from our communities, from our cities. It don't mean a damn thing. It really don't. So what I'm saying is in conclusion, let's stop talking to talk. Let's stop letting other people pick the candidates for us and let us push out and invest in the cans that we know is going to ride with us based on their background and their upbringing bringing based on what we know that they've been through that we've going that we're going through today that they know what we need to get out there not just these little fly by nights who already has the funding from can from people who who was already supporting them that's not from us that's not from our stock that's not from our community we need to do our own investment into the candidates that we want to represent us based on what we've dealt with in our communities. Okay, somebody who has experience from our communities, not somebody that you pick that don't know nothing about our communities, who's not familiar with our communities, who won't laugh at you when they talk about arresting your kids and parents and locking them up in jail because of something the kids did. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Kamala Harris made a mockery out of that. She had uh, put out legislation in California. This is this is a fact. If you don't believe me, Google it. Legislation for truant kids. Even I think I, I, I'm not mistaken, but I think even first time offenders, she would charge the parents two thousand dollars, lock the kids up and the parents up, and she joked about it. Yeah, she even admitted that her staff didn't sit well with that. That didn't sit well with her staff at all. She admitted that and laughed about it. You know? Does this bitch realize, excuse my French, and I'm using it in the conversation. Now, I'm not really caught because I don't really know what like that. I, but hell, who cares? My thing of it is, does she realize... That there may be several reasons why these kids are truant. In some cases, it may not even be their own fault. You know? In some cases, they may be homeless. As a matter of fact, I think there was a homeless woman that I heard a story about, and I, I said, I don't know it's fact, but I heard a story somewhere recently where somebody talked about it was a homeless woman who they did try to charge uh, and lock them up. Because the kids wasn't getting to school, because the kids didn't have no, I think something to do about the kids who didn't have no clothes because they were so poor or something like that. But she doesn't care about knowing the people. She didn't care before. She don't care now. Oh, one other thing I want to talk about. Yeah, her in a relationship with <clears throat> Sweet Dick Willie Brown. 
the man that helped jumpstart her career. I don't care what anybody said. By his own admission, he helped jumpstart her career to two high profile positions. Okay. If you don't believe me on that, you, it's all over the place and you can definitely Google it up. Google it. Google it up, guys and gals. Google it up. Okay. Like I said again, if you really think Kamala Harris is about the people, and she her, her slogan is Kamala Harris for the people. And if I take a guess, it ain't our people for damn sure. Okay, real talk. That's just a slogan. Don't mean nothing. She's already proven her point before. Don't fall for the banana and tailpipe when it comes to her. Myself and several other dozens, uh, if not hundreds of YouTubers have already posted this out for the last two weeks. The day that she admitted uh, she was uh, one, uh, put in for her candidacy, for president of the United States for 2020. She did it on uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, observance of his birthday. January 21st. That wasn't by accident. That was completely planned. She called herself showing her symbolism to her quote unquote heritage. That's the only thing about black that she talked about. She wants to create uh, a relativity of her blackness to black folks to get the vote. She ain't slick. We already knew. Everybody knew what the time was with that. Okay? Well, I'm done talking about that. Um, so, don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Not only with Kamala Harris, with any politician. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Speaking of a possible banana tailpipe, I'm going to talk about this right quick and I'm going to let it go too. Uh, and we've been talking about this for the last, it just came out a couple, few days ago. So, uh, let's see. This is regard, this regards to, of course, Empire uh, actor. He, and he's a very talented guy. I'm not going to lie. He is. Talented as hell. Uh, He's been on the show's been on five years and uh the show's been on for what five seasons? Not yeah, five uh something like that. Was here. Been on for five seasons and it's a uh, it's a very popular show. I, I I have to admit, I like the show. He's one of my favorite characters on the show. By his character and his, you know, being gay, it brings a different dynamic to most to, to any other. Uh, how can we say it? Leading black characters series that I've ever seen, like nothing I've ever seen on television or any place else before. Therefore. By being the way it is, it, it, it brings different not only different dynamic but different scenarios within the landscape of the series itself. And it does make it make it interesting. You know, now don't get me wrong, I don't condone what they do, but it ain't my business what they do. Alright? But I do respect his work on the series. There's no question about it. And he is a very likable character. I don't care who you are. If you watch the show and you watch it enough, he does come off as very likable. Now, since the incident happened a couple of days ago, there's been a complete firestorm all across YouTube and social media and main, the Lane Street media about uh, his allegations of his attack that happened around two something, reported that happened around two something in the morning in the dead of winter in Chicago. Cold as fuck out there. Known as one of the coldest cities in the Midwest. Besides Cleveland and a couple other places. And to be going to a subway. Where you could just call. You know, he stayed at a posh, I guess a posh apartment complex downtown. Which is a few minutes from where he stayed at. 
as, at the subway. You could just simply call Grubhub or somebody, have them leave it, pay for it, and then leave it downstairs or whatever, and you could have just went down and got it. Simple as that. They ain't had to see you. You know? That's what I'm thinking. Um, but there was a lot of holes in the story, and I noticed that the other day. It's like, and I got to thinking about it. I said, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? He said, and this was an initial report. Two white guys was in the mask. He said this, or at least it was reported that he said that. It was reported that two, two white guys in the mask followed him towards his apartment, beat him up, called him all kind of homophobic slurs, but these guys were racist, okay? But we'll get to that in a second. Anyway, and they said uh, on their hats, Make America Great or Magna. And that's what they told him. And they were wearing the hats. If you see a surveillance photo, there was a picture of two guys walking down the street in hoods. They were in hoodies and you couldn't tell what they had on their faces. You couldn't even tell they were white. So that's my question is, how you know they were white? You know, that's my first question. The police could not find any surveillance, and that's been reported, could not find any actual surveillance uh, tax on any camera regarding Jesse Smollett. The only one I heard recently was the fact that they that, that he was that they saw a camera with him with the noose around his neck, which they did during the attack. That was it. He had like a small scratch on the right side of his face, but the, the right side of his face did look a little puffed up, you know. They say he had uh, some ribs broken. But if they're talking about they, that they beat him up the way they did, he really didn't have virtually nothing on his head. His head wasn't busted. He had no black eyes, nothing like that. Now, the rumor mill, and this is only a rumor, and I can't claim that it's true or not, it was alleged that the reason he was out that late may have been because he was looking for what they quoted already as street meat. I know nothing about that. I'm just telling you what was being said, but I don't know that to be a fact. In other words, he might have been out there meeting up with uh, uh, somebody that he knew or was trying to get at him and might have had a fight with him. And they probably broke up. Let me tell you the other scenario. It was reported that he had talked to his manager during the time it happened over the phone. Jesse Smollett has yet to give up the phone to the police officers. Okay. They wanted to look over the phone of the conversation. That's what was reported as well. He has not given up his phone. That's, that's what was also reported, alleged. Alleged. Okay. So, you know, my thing is this. And again, like I said, there's no surveillance of it. There's cameras at the hotel. They showed it right in the area where he got attacked. But yet there's no cameras, nothing on the camera during that time frame that he said happened. Nothing. Okay. But it was said that they, he walked back to the hotel the only footage that they got was him with the noose around his neck. Oh, and one other thing. He didn't call 911. That also makes you question it. You wouldn't call 911 after that happened? They even put more holes in the story than ever before. He initially didn't even call him. And he didn't want security. He didn't feel he needed security. Now, this is the other story. Days before this incident, Jesse Smollett was getting death threats. There's documentation of that. There was calls to the studio, to the location in Chicago where they, where they shoot the series. Okay? He did not needing security 
even though it was initially insisted upon by Lee Daniels and uh, the studio. All right. That's another thing. You telling me you getting death threats. You are the biggest television star on lamestream te- television. On the, one of the most popular networks on television. With one of the most popular shows on television. And you co-star with two of the biggest names in, in black entertainment. Okay? On television. And you are already a legend on television, groundbreaking on television, as a gay actor, singer, songwriter. And you get death threats days before this attack, and you did not want any security. Make that make sense, people. Jesse, brother, I love and respect your work. I don't know you personally. I think you're a great guy. You know. Here's the thing. Brother, stand on your square. If it was about gifted lover, just go ahead and admit it. Nobody cares. I mean, you this, this it may it's part of your business. You probably know who actually did it. Now, I'm not saying that it, the attack didn't happen per se. It probably just didn't happen the way you described it. That's all I'm saying. There's too many holes in the story. No, sur- no actual surveillance footage of, of, of the incident that's supposed to have happened right outside the hotel. I mean, in our apartment, but wherever you stay at. No surveillance video. Uh, 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 only surveillance video that they said they showed was when you, I guess you were, they showed you with the noose around your neck. And that's all they saw. And one picture of two uh, people walking on the street of Chicago, downtown, in hoods, wearing all black. That's it. And you didn't call 911. You didn't call 911. Okay? You initially didn't even report it. And that's when reports have, have been told. And the fact you wouldn't even let the, uh, the, the uh, officers see your phone. Okay? Even though you claimed that you talked with your manager around the time the incident happened. There's more stories or more holes to this story than Swiss cheese. There really is. More questions than answers. The only person that really know knows exactly what happened is Jesse himself. But either way, he has to live with the truth that he knows. But people should not be expected to live with your truth that you're putting out there now because there's too many holes in the, in the story. All there is to it. At some point, somebody will have to stay on the square and come with the realization of what really happened. All right? But I got a feeling that it may be damaging to your career once you do that. I just got a feeling about that. Me personally, if I wanted the biggest stars on television, I would have asked for security anyway, long before they even got to that point. Especially as controversial of a TV star as you, as you are, I would automatically ask for security. You know what the climate is now. Yeah, people do accept you being gay, but there are some people who don't. White people only like you cause, just because you're black. And you popular and you gay. You know? You should already think right there. Boom. That's it. There it is. You know? I might want to get security. I might want to have at least two or three people that have my back. No pun intended. But they have my back to protect me. Because I'm a very high profile guy. Instead of walking around 2 30 in the morning. By myself from subway to my apartment by myself. You know people want to recognize you off the clip the moment you will step out anywhere. Okay? 
right now you're kind of the, you know, for lack of a better word, the Michael Jackson slash Drake of nighttime soap opera stars. You're a big deal. The last thing you would want to do is to not have security. But you seem comfortable in that. Too comfortable. Because I saw the written uh, death threats. Now, whether it was a joke or not is irrelevant. But when you get a death threat from somebody, you always take it seriously because you don't know what people's intentions are anymore, especially in this climate and this day and age. You really don't. But apparently you didn't see it. It seemed to bother you one bit. And that's the other thing that bothers me about this whole scenario with you, bro. You didn't even question that. But you expect nobody else to? Really? And you say that, that two white guys beat you up. Now, don't get me wrong. Because again, that very well could have been the case. But with all these holes in the story, people are going to question that. No matter what. And until you come clean about it, with all these holes in the story, they're going to keep asking you about it. They're going to keep pining you about it. Because at some point, at some point, like they said with Ralph Northam and Kamala Harris and yourself, what's done in the dark will truly come out in the light. This is all I got, guys, gals. This is DJ Wolf. Glad to be talking with you guys. Um, I enjoy uh, getting this off my chest. I had to. There was a lot on my mind today. A lot of other issues I'm dealing with personally. And uh, I'm also working on uh, doing another DJ gig coming up in a, a few weeks. I, at some point, I will try to do a, what I call the calibration show, which is basically going to be me doing uh, DJing my, do, uh, working with my DJ equipment to set up for this major gig I'm going to be doing in a few weeks. And I'm going to actually broadcast. I'm hoping to broadcast soon. All right, guys. Uh, this is DJ Wolf. That's all I got to say. Thank you for listening. Uh, you guys on uh, YouTube, you'll be watching this. Uh, thanks for uh, checking me out. Please rate and subscribe and like. Okay. Um, like I said, uh, I verbally shoot straight from the hip to try to tell you what I'm seeing. This is my whole point of my channel. It's for all to hear what's on my mind about the things I see now, the way that I view the world as it is today. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to leave with this. If you can be a help to others, be there for them. If you can be a friend to others, be there for them. If you need help from others, let them know. This is DJ Wolf. That's all I got, guys and gals. Um, I'll be talking to you on another podcast. Uh, not sure about another live one, but it could come up uh, in the next uh, day or so. But either way, stay tuned, stay posted. Of course, as always, I got more to say on the back burner about this and other stuff. Uh, oh, and if you also want to uh, subscribe to my channel, my channel is DJ Wolf Live on YouTube. And this channel, of course, is DJ Wolf Live on Spreaker. So you can subscribe, rate, like, comment on uh, YouTube, and comment on Spreaker. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, also, if you want to further discuss or debate or be on my podcast, uh, drop me a line, DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. That's DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. Okay, all one word. You don't have to worry about, you know, this, that, other. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this is DJ Wolf. Of course, again, I got more to say about this and other topics in the back burner. And of course, I will stay on all uh, three topics that I just mentioned, specifically the Kamala Harris and uh, Jesse Smollett uh, 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 issues. All right, this is DJ Wolf. I'm out.